bad. Rainy evening. My wife is doing the work. I did a little housework. I'm not above that. Did some vacuuming, did a water change in the aquariums, and I'm sitting here befuddling myself. So here's the conditions. And I'm going to talk about Osage bows. I'm going to talk about a box opening. Actually, the phone in which I'm recording is sitting on a 32 pound box of Morton salt. Multiple boxes. My wife is like, why'd you buy so much salt? And it's like, hey, you know, when um, we enter the Mad Max world in a, a month or two, <laughs> possibly, who knows, but salt's handy. It's not only good for flavoring your soup and your roast, it's also a heck of a method of food preservation. I've got fishing poles and I've got various other sundry things for gathering woods meat. And so, hey, salt's a handy thing. They used to pay people in salt. But unboxing, first I'm going to get this torturing out of the way. Mandolin plugged into the AB box, which is a, a way to switch um, which input is going to go through the multi-effects pedal and into the amplifier. So I've got two instruments, an electric violin and a mandolin, a Kentucky KM250S, a nice vintage one. And so here I am working on, now the standard songs we play, you know, mixture, reverb, delay, and uh, the gain is not cranked up. But I've been experimenting on the last two songs or covers, you know. By the time we get done playing near the end, it'll be, I don't know, about 10.30 or so, Saturday night. Most of the, the happy festival goers will probably be hopped up on their weed or whatever. And so the, the last two songs, my take on it, and then the, the leader of the band is going to come and kind of peruse my my list of tones. Boy, that's going to be fun. But I've got some wild stuff going on. This is... Uh, Second to the last song is Time by Pink Floyd. I'm, I am the honorary David Gilmore. And then, of course, Muse, Super Massive Black Hole, which I hit the octave button, and it goes down an octave. But hang with me. I'm going to torture you a little bit. And I'm, and I'm sure it's not going to translate to that modest little speaker. <laughs> whale song it's like star trek when they had to come back to earth to catch a couple whales and bring them into the future so they could make them work in their factories you know you think that they were just trying to stop like the alien creatures but really they needed some whales to mine the ocean uh so first off do not be afraid i'm a professional i have no idea what gee a boar path archery sent me it's a it's a flat thing. I don't know. He wanted, G, I'm going to tell you that I made a video and, and you can watch it. I have no idea what G sent me. G, it's a mystery. Sorry, G. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's pretty cool. Oh, that looks like a little muskrat. Oh, nice. G is a handy kind of fellow. I like that. Th 
Thank you, G. That will hang in my teepee with pride. Isn't that nice? It's like a little miniature beaver. Nice. Thanks, G. I like that. I did not expect that. Excellent. I'm going to put that right there. Maybe I'll hang it in my music room here. And now, and now what you've been waiting for. Errol, I could go over some handy tips and tricks as far as working an Osage bow. Now, you said that you bought it from Mike Yancey at Pine Hollow Longbows, which means if you asked for a clean stave, there's... An, there's nary a knot in it, and it's perfectly straight, and it's going to be a premium type of stave. I will say that in the past, um, Mike has sent me big, heavy staves. One, for example, I was able to make, out of one stave, six English-style longbows by carefully, I, I forget how many, side by side in the top layer, then I split them out, and then I worked down to a growth ring down there at the the bottom of the triangle and so it's possible that you might be able to get two bows out of your stave i don't know but there is a, a video i'm blanking on it right now but this guy is ultra smooth smooth in his approach um to using the draw knife and clamping and working down to a growth ring and i think you'll appreciate it so go into the description of this video if you've made it this far you've made it past me torturing you with sound Go to the description of the video, pull up the video I'm going to send you, and watch that. I mean, the guy does an amazing job. I wish I could remember the name of it. Other handy tips. I mean, personally, when I'm draw knifing, I don't draw knife, I push knife. I mean, the handles are facing away from me. I just have more control when I'm pushing it. And actually, the little knife that I opened up G's package with, I use this a lot as a scraper to go around knots. It's got that little rounded feature, so if there's a... A dip or a valley, I can work into it. Working sideways, the stave is this way, and I'm I'm working this way into the valleys, being very careful. Don't be afraid to use a little bit of sandpaper, um, some smaller scraper, um, a rasp sometimes if you have to work around that. I would say though, that's how I approach it. I look at the end. And I found my target growth ring, which needs to be a thickish one. You don't want to get like those paper thin ones that might be between your target and a sapwood. And what I try to do is I've got my stave. And, and typically I'll try to remove as much wood as is possibly comfortable. Because you do have to line things up and it might be twisted. You don't want to make it so then you have to bend the center, you know, to line up the string. But if you have a piece of Osage this wide and you've got a piece of osage this wide which one do you think is easier to work down to a growth ring just saying what else i try to work it down evenly from end to end i don't want to there's my target growth ring and start working for it before i remove everything on the other side you know what i mean so there's not like this big old hump of multi layers and i'm trying to get down the one i'll hog off a bunch of it just splitting off and then maybe get one growth ring above my target growth ring so it's nice and even and all i have to do is remove one growth ring to get down to my target one and you've got that hard stuff and then that foamy crackly layer to just kind of it's easy to scrape off but yeah i'm not going to talk too much longer i really got to figure this thing out just watch that video i'm going to show you i'm not above saying hey this guy explains it better than i do that's all Thanks, G.